Hey, I wanted to record myself throwing together a uh, dialogue box. Um, the system for showing dialogue boxes in a terminal using my text user interface library for fun. It's very loud outside my room, so it's probably going to be very loud in the video, and I don't expect to not be interrupted. <laughs> but we're gonna try. I got music here, and we're gonna code something and see what happens. I'm gonna go into my projects folder, which I set up recently, and start something here. I'm gonna make it, I don't know, Chewy dialog box. We're using Chewy lib, and I'm just gonna use the version that's on NPM, because it's practical. Jawsin. Um, Chewy lib. I think this should work. I have not done any node programming for real in a while, so. Cool. Um, let's, uh, yeah, no need to do anything crazy here. Class, app, elements. I don't know. Usually, there are like professional ways to do this, but I don't actually know, like, oh god, I can't speak. <laughs> um, I haven't done any programming with Tulib in a while, so I don't actually remember what the boilerplate looks like. I think that I have a boilerplate in here somewhere, maybe, um, yeah, Tubi app which I can use for making this a bit easier. Um, so let's try that. Um, Tui app. Whoa, what's going on here? Um, Tui app. It is a callback, which is called with root, suspend program, and quit program. That's just beautiful, and it gives us, yeah, just a root element, which is where we're going to put our app element. Um, extends. We need focus elements. This is all boilerplate shit. Um, let's see. We need key pressed, key buff. If the key buff is. I don't remember how I normally do this. I think I should have. Yeah, this is still here. Control C. Oh. Quit request. Um. Whoa. Where's. Huh? Oh. I guess it's calling shutdown. Yeah, here. This is the code we're looking for. I'll just paste it. Whatever. Um. And then we need the uh, handling code. Except we don't want this to be. We should just do. Actually, yeah, let's implement these as separate functions for now. Um, shut down. Emit quit requested. And suspend. Emit suspend requested. Beautiful. Alright. Um, now let's try making this thing happen. 
Um, Tui app. Um, I don't know. We need root suspend program quit program. Oh yeah, I guess I don't have semicolons here because I don't normally use them. Well, I do normally use them, I just haven't used them properly since... I didn't use them back when I created um, the TUI, so I'm gonna use the code style that I normally do now, which is four spaces and double quotes. I don't even think the double quotes are valid. <laughs> I think that single quotes are the only way to go, but other people have been trying to convince me otherwise, so I'm going to give in to peer pressure. Um, Alright, we need to create a new app element as our app, and stick that into the root, and select the app. And I think that should just kind of do it. Maybe. This isn't, dis this isn't gonna display anything, it'll just be a blank screen. Um, oh wait, yeah, no. Root.onQuit requested. Um, quit program. Dot on suspend requested. Suspend program. Very lovely. Node index. That didn't work. That's because focus element is under form because I was really good at designing these things. Exception is not defined. That there, that one's, that's a goodie. I like that. Um... <laughs> huh? Okay. Animals as leaders. Thanks. This is loud enough that I'm gonna skip it. Sorry. Um two yap dot js on sixty what? Whoa, I'm not in the right file. <laughs> no, wait, yeah, of course. Okay, line thirty four. Root dot add child is not defined. Exception is not defined. This is concerning. Why is exception not defined? Um Whoa, what is going on here? Throw exception? Holy shit, I guess I fucking separated this back a bajillion years ago? Okay. An element cannot be a child of itself. Oh, holy shit. Root.addchild root? Don't do that. Wow, okay, that's a bug. Um. Let's fix it, I guess. I don't remember. I guess I have it defined here. Alright, hold on. <laughs> Where even is that happening? Why is... Alright, we gotta check out where exception is supposed to be defined. Because... Hill somewhere, presumably? Yeah, exception. It is just not imported. To elib UI um, grab r dot e till exception. Oops. Okay. Oh. I guess that makes sense. It's literally only used in one place. Um, yeah, right, because I separated add child code out of here, it's only been used in to elib UI elements. Yeah, okay. Um, cool. NPM link. And, uh, let's get back to the fuck this thing's called, Chewy dialog box. npm link, Chewy lib, and try it again. Yay! That's not concerning. 
Um, that's not concerning at all. Oh, well, yeah, I guess it would help if I were still running the wrong code in the first place. Um, whoa, what is even going on here? Yeah, okay, that bug is fixed. Good shit. Let's make a command for that, at least. Um, get diff. Get commit fix um exception function <laughs> not being imported properly. Oops. Okay. Now we got root to add child app. Very cool, doesn't work. Key pressed. Um quit requested. Cool. This is one of my favorite debugging tricks. It's really good. This is just very quality debugging. Um, is to put a process.exit. Well, it process.exited, so it's working when I press Control C. Um, so at least we're emitting it correctly. Looks like quit program isn't getting called properly. Um, quit program. It might have to do with the status function getting fucked up. Let's try this. Nope. Um. Oh, no. It's because I'm putting it on the wrong, uh, listener. Duh. Should have checked that first. Okay. Let's try that again. There we are. Check it out. Runs, press control C, exits. Plus, if we suspend. Yeah, no prob. Beautiful. Very cool. Alright. I don't know how to clean the buffer list besides doing that. Um. Yeah. Okay, so our boilerplate code is all done. Let's, uh, give this a pane. Because I like putting everything into a pane. Gotta import pane. Um, and fix layout. This.pane.fillParent. Add child, this.pane. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Yay, that looks definitely correct and not wrong at all. Let's try resizing this window and seeing if we're just not calling fix layout. Nope. Oh, the problem is probably that we're not filling the parent itself. There we are. Beautiful. Now the app fills the parent and the pane fills the parent. Yeah, so using a pane to make the user interface like this. Uh, just as sort of like a no idea why that error is here. I'm not gonna think too hard about it. Moreover, it's confusing that it happens in this, but not in MTUI. <laughs> Whatever. That is not what we're focusing on right now. Point is, user interface works. Okay, so we want to make a dialog box. We want to get started with the actual code now. Um, let's uh, get this auto scrolling. Um. Class dialog box elements? Um, is it a focus element? Can you focus a dialog box? Yes. Um, uh, we're going to be basing this off of the dialog boxes in just about any video game. Particularly, I'm gonna say, um, god, I don't know, Dragon Quest? Anything, really. Um, they're all, they all behave basically the same. We'll figure out edge cases as we get to them. For now, 
we're gonna just make some shit. Um, dialogue boxes... Arguably should contain a pain, but I think that the actual, uh... I think the actual dialogue box... Yeah, okay, no, let's give it a pain. I'm, like, trying to decide whether I want the dialogue box to contain a pain itself, or whether it should be put in a pain. And I decided perhaps takes a pain. Lego? Oh, Simon the Magpie. Cool. Um, great. Um, however, when we fix layout... The pain is going to fill the parent, but the uh, dialog box itself is not going to get its own user interface. So let's make a... let's make it... Cool. Now it goes into the pane. And this dot dialog box dot... With equals, I don't know, math dot min is that pain dot content width thirty. Let's do the same for height. It'll probably just break if it's less than five, but whatever. Now that is looking good. Very cool. Awesome sauce. <laughs> I occasionally guess hi. Yeah. That's very cool. What's up with you? Oh, okay. Bye. Yeah. Stole a thing of chips. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. All right. I wanted it to be small because then we can deal with like line wrapping stuff later. But for now, that's not our concern. Um. The dialogue box element. Yeah, it's literally a dialogue box, but it's going to contain a content element. Which is not going to have, like, interface controls. It's just going to be the thing which controls how text is displayed to the screen. Accordingly, it gets its own draw to function. Um, since it's a plain old display element. Display element. Okay. Um, we're going to need the ANSI. Just a sec here. Let's see. It also needs some kind of, I don't know, state for what text it's displaying. Um, this dot. This is where we need to think about, like, how we're going to display text. Um, because in 2 lib we normally use labels for everything, like, I mean, obviously we're using the same library, which this music player is coded in, and here we've got everything. It's basically just a bunch of labels. Um, we don't want to use labels here because... Actually, we might want to use labels. Hmm... Maybe. Labels do, as of, like, recently, have support for formatting shit. But... I think I'd rather use a higher level thing than literally just passing escape codes to this. So, let's think about this. 
Okay, okay, okay. So I'm thinking about um, my experience with text boxes before. Um, and right now, since we're sort of planning out the layout for it, this is something that we want to figure out uh, now, like what we want the actual structure of the class to be. Um, with dialogue boxes, one thing that I've seen a few games do, which is very silly in my opinion, is um, as they animate text showing up, like from left to right, character by character, um, if the final word on a line um, surpasses the width of the content area, it will then wrap the word, but it will only, and that makes sense, right? Because you want to wrap your words so that they all display and don't go out of the range of the element. The problem is that it does that once, uh, it does that while it's animating instead of pre-computing where the letters are going to show up. In that regard, we are definitely going to be doing some pre-computing of the text in order to uh, display, in order to identify where the characters are going to show up, um, to avoid that animated word wrapping thing. Um, so, um, I think Shepard Skies is from Night of Morning. It's a really good song. What? Oh. Oh, I forgot that I have the scary jokes here. Cool. Um. Anyway. Jeez. I think I was saying something about the way things animate. Um. Yeah, so anyway, because we're going to have a pre-compute phase for dealing with word wrapping, we may as well use that pre-compute phase to deal with other things like text attributes and all that. And we can say that the output of that pre-compute phase will be a list of characters, or a list of lines, and the characters that will be displayed on those, including formatting data. Um, cool. Um, so that's all just fine. Um, let's, uh, try doing something with that. Um, compute text. Compute, uh, I don't know, input. <laughs> um, this is gonna be some format. Some weird-ass format. And it's going to generate the, um, characters that display, um, computed characters is going to be just a big array. Um, it's going to be, um, I don't know, it's going to be... Let's see, uh, now we need to think of what we want the computed characters, uh, structure to look like. And, in trying to figure out this, I'm thinking about what my draw, what my looping over this list is gonna look like. It would be pretty easy to make this into a, um, into... I am not sure what I'm thinking. I think I was saying something. Yeah, I, it would be pretty easy to make this into a two-dimensional list. Um, which is cool um, for drawing, because it's easy, right? It's like you loop per row, and then you loop per column. The trouble is that... Uh, we're gonna be animating this, right? So, what we're actually gonna have is, like, this dot number of characters to display, or display characters. 
loud. Rowan's being loud. Brother. Um, yeah, so we're going to have a number of characters to display. And this is going to be a scalar value, right? I mean, maybe it won't be computed, like, right here. But the point is, it's going to be a number of characters to display. And it's going to increase with time. Um, it's not going to be... It's not gonna... This number, as a single digit... As a single scalar number, doesn't say anything about rows or columns. It's just the number of characters to display. Meaning that if we're looping over computed characters, like a two-dimensional array, um, we're gonna be... We're going to have to check after every character we draw if the character we drew, if if the character we just drew uh, was the final character according to the number of characters to display. And if that's the case, then we have to break. And then not just do we have to break from like the main loop. We don't just have to break from one loop. We have to break the parent loop and. JavaScript technically makes this easy because, like, the code for this would look like uh, for const row of this dot compute characters, um, const column of row. What we would end up doing is being like, um, displayed characters is zero. Well, after drawing each character, we go displayed characters plus plus. If displayed characters is equal to the number of characters to display, then break. But we're not breaking from this one, we're breaking from the main loop. So we type this, and do this. But this is, like, exclusively looping code based on the fact that this is structured as a 2D array. And that's a lot of code. <laughs> um... So it would be awesome to have a more simple format, um, and so I think I'm gonna go for something which, uh, doesn't need to deal with rows or columns or anything like that, and we can just make that into part of the rendering code. What we're gonna do instead is say this.computedCharacters is going to be an array of a whole bunch of objects, and really it's not that many objects, it's one object per character, um, and only the characters which are getting displayed to the screen. And it's going to... Um, each character is going to have a character field. Um, and... It's going to have certain other attributes to describe the formatting, as well as the line break. Um, so we're going to do, like, formatting will be some other object like that with, I don't know, color codes or whatever. And it's going to have a... It's going to have... God, what is it going to have? It's going to have a line break um, function, a line break, a line break attribute, um, which is cool. Um, okay, it occurs to me that maybe we don't need, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Um, I'm thinking about how to do this. Yeah, okay. So, computed characters is intended... Alright, I'm trying to think about how I want to structure this. Computed characters itself is going to be something we loop over to display characters. Um... Making it a simple list like this, where each index corresponds to, like that nth character in the full display, is very nice. However, um, 
because it, it's, like, useful for looping and shit. However, um, it means that if we want certain things, like, alright, so I guess I'll tell you what got me to thinking about this, alright? We got formatting, okay? Formatting is going to be something like bold true, okay? So, our next character is probably going to have the same formatting, right? And even the same line break. Okay. And uh, this would just like. Whoops. Um. Like, it would go like this. And it's gonna be this giant uh, array with largely the same data per um, character, which seems redundant. Now, I originally said that this isn't that big of a deal because it's not that many objects, and I'm right about that. It isn't. <laughs> However, the implication with this is that we're going to be performing a fair bit of actual operations per object? Like, the objects themselves aren't going to take that much memory, but we're going to be spending some time per object to, uh, you know, loop over the formatting and, uh, check if it's line, uh, check if it's broke a line. Um, and this is, like, kind of complicated? Especially for cases where 99% of the time we're not doing anything. So... I'm thinking, like, here's a situation, um, let's say that, you know, let's spell out hello world here, obviously. You know, you got your hello world, and let's say that from here, god, I don't even know how to do this. I have never used Vim, give me a break. How do I replace this with false? Uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever. So you got your hello in bold, and then world in uh, not bold. Um, and what's gonna happen is we have... Uh, there are two possible things we can do here. One of them is to be very, uh, sort of dummy about it, and just say, uh, loop over each of these letters, and go, okay, character H. Let's check the formatting. Formatting is bold true, so let's insert the ANSI command code for bold. Great. Now let's move on, and then let's insert the character, obviously, which is H. Um... And also, in order to clean up for the next character, whatever formatting the next character is, let's also reset the formatting after writing H. So that's great. And then we move on to the next character and do the whole same process for the letter E, so it becomes bold H unbold, bold E unbold, bold L unbold, or, you know, bold H reset, and so on. <laughs> And, like, cool, but obviously very, 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 uh, redundant. So, um, what we would do, the other thing we could do is say, okay, well, um, alright, let's go, let's sort of, what we're gonna do is, as we're drawing, we'll keep a state, containing all the formatting um, in the same structure as this object. And as we... It would initially start with every tag being false um, as a reset format. And then as we loop through each character, we'll say, okay, H, this is formatted to be bold. Um, and we're currently not formatted bold, so let's insert a bold um, 
the ANSI command code for making things bold. And that's cool. Um, which is great. And then um, we move on to the next, you know, we insert the ANSI command code for bold. Then we insert H. Um, and then we don't do anything else. We just keep it in mind, in state, that now we're drawing bold text. So we move on to the next one, check its formatting, and well, it's bold, so that's not a change, so we don't have to do anything, we're already bolded. Um, and then we insert the character E, and so on. And this is all very cool, and it keeps going through LLO and space, and then it gets to W, and this le character is marked not bold. So, uh, that is a change from the existing bold true all the way to here. Um, so we need to either, like, enter the ANSI code for unbolding, or just reset and reapply the other, any other attributes. Whatever. Um, and then insert W, and then of course, nothing at the end. And we'll keep going until the very end, and once we're done the last one, we would, uh, if we still have any attributes applied, reset then. Which is all very cool and good, except this is a fair bit of behavior um, to run every single time we draw two, right? We're checking, now we're dealing with state in draw two, and um, creating an object and fucking around with the values on that, and checking every single entry in our formatting against that, um, every time, for every character, like, yeah, we're gonna be outputting less characters, but it's still a lot of work per character, it's just that we move that work into our draw to function instead of, uh, instead of dealing with it when we actually output it to the screen. Um, and yes, that is real work that has to be done on the computer, be it, you know, within the actual terminal or multiplexer or whatever. In this case, it's within a uh, multiplexer style thing that I've written for 2elib itself to optimize the stuff that gets written to the screen in order to improve performance. Uh, across, like, networks and shit like that. Um, anyway, point being, we're moving a bunch of work uh, from there to um, our draw to function, and this has to be still, this is still uh, work that has to be done for every character, for every draw, and um, in this case, we're going to be drawing, you know, pretty frequently, um, whatever the animation rate is. Um, so, how do we get rid of that work altogether, is the question. Um, and the answer is going to be to look at where that work is initially created and why it's created. Um, Keep in mind, I'm mostly talking out of my butt as far as uh, <laughs> fucking figuring out performance shit goes, because I don't have that much experience. Um, but like, you know, if you want to get rid of work, you gotta go back to its source and figure out where it's coming from, right? Um, so, all this, all these objects are going to be constructed according to some weird-ass format. So why don't we figure out what some weird-ass format is going to be? The weird-ass format is going to be something along the lines of... Um, God, actually, I don't think it necessarily matters. Um, let's, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't think it necessarily matters what the weird-ass format is. Um... Because, at the end of the day, I guess, alright, yeah, so, let's think about it like 
this. We're trying to figure out uh, what structure for computed characters is going to work best to um, provide the least amount of redundant work. Um, generally speaking, we're concerned with work that shows up um, whenever we draw to the screen because that is what's going to be called a lot. That's where we're going to be repeating things, so we want to get rid of work there. When we're drawing to the screen, the, the output format that we described in the sort of more optimized version where we, we went over just now, where we go over uh, the formatting object and check against state, um, check against the state for the previous character, basically, is... Oh god, that's a good point. Holy shit, I could just, like, reference the previous character. But, instead of, like, keeping a separate state variable, but, 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 um, that's cool, but, like, um, it's still, you know, work that we have to do. Um, uh, my brain is farting right now. It's like, it's going fast. So I have to wait for it to cool down. And get back to the thinking position. <laughs> for my brain to catch up. Uh, did we listen to this? Holy shit. No way, we did listen to these, didn't we? Must have, because uh, I remember listening to Sherbert's Skies. I don't think I skipped anything else except for, like, uh, this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway... God, it's like I'm looking at a wall of code. Which is true. Um. Hmm. I don't remember. I think I was talking about, like, the format of this, and how that should, like, sort of be a corresponding thing to what we're outputting to the screen or to the multiplexer or whatever, to the writable in this case. Um, so I'm gonna kind of just go from there, <laughs> since I don't actually remember where I was when I was talking. <laughs> Anyway, God. So, when we're writing to our writable, the final format that we're going to be uh, outputting, that we were aiming to output before, like, we were optimizing what that format was going to look like, because originally the trouble was it would be, like, uh, bold H reset, bold E reset, and so on. Um, so we optimized that to bold H E L L O space, unbold, W-O-R-L-D, exclamation mark. Um, this is cool, but we have to compute, uh, that every time we draw. We have to compute when we're gonna be setting commands down for, uh, bolding or unbolding or any formatting every single time. If we're computing word wrap, uh, preemptively, then why not use that as the opportunity, since we're likely going to be generating a certain formatting, a uh, certain uh, console formatting based on whatever the weird-ass format is anyway, why don't we use that as the uh, uh, 
as a chance to just one time compute what commands we're going to be putting to the screen. And then we can loop over per our display characters variable and render those commands. And I think that would work. I think that would work. So, my initial idea was what this would look like instead is instead of having bold true 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 false 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 and so on is we would do we would change these to a type um character um and get rid of you know all this formatting shit um formatting like this that didn't work uh huh god i don't actually know how vim shit works whatever <laughs> see i use vim not intelligently and it works anyway we would have like type character character h and then we would have uh before that, we would have type formatting, and it would be like bold true, and it would be the same for all the rest of the characters. Um, you know, E L L O space, and then it would be type formatting, bold false. World. Exclamation mark. Right? So this is fine. And if we needed to do a line break eventually at some point, then you know, you'd have the same thing here, right? Like we just have a new type for that. Which is fine. Um, and this is what I was originally thinking. The only trouble with this is that now we aren't we lost what we had before, which was looping over a one-dimensional list where each index corresponds to a character. Um, so, I think that since fundamentally that's still the iteration that we're doing, um, we could change these instead to be characters. Okay, so they're always characters, um, but we would have something, we would have, like, an array of extra things, extra properties, or attributes, or object descriptors, saying what we want to do, um, like, before this character, or as we insert this character. Um, so it would be like, instead, it would be like this. Um, pow. It would be like this, instead. Um, which is a nicer format, because we're looping over, um, character by character, right? This is all one object. It's one index in the list. Um, likewise for all of these, they're character by character. As such, since computed characters is going to be exclusively characters, we can, um, get rid of all that type character shit, like that, and it would be like this. Um, yeah, because they're all going to be, like, characters. And I think this is not a bad, uh, this is not a bad, um, object, except I like the type format instead of formatting. More. So I think maybe this is the format we'll go with. Um, yeah. Mind, when I'm actually coding... Like, on my own, this is the type of thing that I would just figure out in my head, and 
impossibly write code comments if I wanted to explain what the hell I was doing to anyone else, but realistically just write the structure out, figure out all the decisions that go into that structure, and uh, do all of that within the span of like a couple minutes instead of 20 or 30. Um, this is a just what happens when I try to explain all my reasoning and all my thinking aloud. And it is the type of thing that will happen to me, <laughs> like where my brain will just go dead ass blank and be confused as to where the hell it was thinking, um, is the type of thing that will happen to me while I'm doing general coding to you. But, I mean, it happens at pretty much the same frequency, so it's like, because I'm spending a lot less time focusing on individual matters, it's not as disruptive. Um, it's not as disruptive because I already get the thing that I'm working on done and I'm not like super far into that thought process. It's not like a big thought process that takes a lot to figure out where the hell I'm going and where I am. Anyway, um, very cool shit. We've got our structure. We can display it now. <laughs> Holy shit. So, let's do some looping. Um, we're not going to be too concerned with how this is generated right now, because the weird-ass format is not what we're worrying about. What we're going to do is uh, loop over each uh, character. Each character extra of the loop from, like, I mean, I would, I could probably do a slice here, but I guess it's probably better to just literally use a for let of loop. Um, because I think that these are generally more performant. I don't know, it doesn't involve as many complicated things. <laughs> Whatever. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, we're gonna loop over this and say, uh, character extra equals this dot computed characters I all right so if extra um then we're gonna go over the things in that for const um, entry of extra yeah if entry dot type equals format, then we're gonna do something with that formatting. Uh, we can use the switch case here. Whatever. <laughs> Oops. Type case format. Do some cool shit. Um. We're gonna have like bold true and bold false, um, but realistically, we're gonna be doing. We're gonna reduce this. We're going to expand this in our computing to something like type. Uh, actually, it would still probably be like this because of how we're gonna be uh, outputting the command. Um, but for now, let's just do writable dot write. Um, we're going to be constructing, and then plus attributes, attributes, string, attributes dot join by semicolon, we don't need a variable if we're only using it at one time, whoops. Close this. Alright. Let's put this in a block. Attributes is going to be an array of like this. If I know it would be like zero semicolon to reset first. So if entry dot bold, then attributes dot push one. I think that makes sense. 
There are probably more optimal ways to do this anti-wise, but I don't care, and they're not really consistent. Like a command for specifically unbolding, but whatever. Um. So yeah, and I'm not using the. I have a utility function, a utility library for ANSI shit, but in this case, um, I'm just gonna rewrite it here because I think the general code is a little easier to reason about, or whatever. Um, like generating this string is gonna be nicer. Like, ostensibly, it would be like. Reset attributes plus attributes, but that's not as efficient as this. <laughs> and if we're working close to the metal, we may as well use the whole string ourselves. Okay. Anyway. Um. Yeah. And then we have to, like, write the character, right? And that's it. That's all it takes. Um. If it's a line break, right, so if it's like, if it's case line break, then we're going to be um, moving down to the next line, and that's a, we're just, that's code that we haven't even gotten to yet. Um, but yeah, this should work, generally speaking. Let's uh, just code the... Um, Let's code the stuff. Let's write the code for positioning the cursor. Um, positioning the cursor is not something that is done automatically in Draw2 because of stuff like, you know, multiple line shit. Um, likewise, Draw2 does not provide us any utilities for writing relative to the position of the element, we get to do all that on our own, so you could have elements which just don't give a shit about their position, that's fine. But generally, you do write elements that give a shit about their position, because, you know, that's how things make sense. So, we're gonna write, um, ansi dot, I don't know, move cursor? I don't actually remember how to do this. So let's uh, look at the code for pain. Pain. Um, draw frame. Yeah. I don't know why draw frame is something that you can override. Uh, yeah, this is a cool to do past me. You are very uh, courageous. This is something that I still kind of want to do at some point, but not right now. Anyway. Um, yeah. Move cursor. And, yeah. And you can, you can see we're going to be using these abs left, abs right, abs top, abs bottom functions. Uh, attributes. So we would do ansi.move cursor, this.abs top, this.abs left, I believe. Yeah. Um... We're gonna just do const row equals this dot abs top and let column equals this dot abs left. But column is not gonna be something that we just like write as a let thing because that's a constant. Um, column isn't gonna be changing. The row will be though. Because the row is going to change when we do this. Um, I believe, yeah, because it's abs top, it's like distance from top. Um, we're dealing with rows top down, um, not bottom up. So row plus plus is going to move us down a line um, on the visual screen. And... We're gonna move the cursor. Um, row column. And same here. Row column. Very nice. And then we're just gonna write the character. And I think this should be fine. Um, 
So let's make sure that we've got our dialog. Our... Like right now, if we run this, it's not going to draw anything, right? But once we, uh... Oh, I forgot to even add the content elements. This dot content element is new. Dialog content element. Uh, this dot pain dot add child. This dot content element. Fill parent with the content element. Uh, very cool. Yeah, surprise. I always forget. Okay, so this isn't going to draw anything. But... Compute... Uh, input. Uh, very nice. And, yeah. I assume that the reason that that didn't display anything is because display characters is zero. This dot content element dot display characters equals eight. <laughs> Whatever. Hello world. <laughs> Hello whoa. Excellent and perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything else. Great. It works. It's beautiful. It displays. And, uh, yeah, it's displaying up to character eight. If it was nine here, it would be like that. If we were displaying one character, it's like that. I'm gonna, like, animate this by hand. How? Oh. Very nice. Now, mind, in practice, there would not be a space here at the end of the line. We wouldn't display that in our word wrapping code. We would skip that and just jump to W. Um, but yeah. Hello. And let's get the rest of these characters up. I suspect I am going to run into a uh, situation if I try to display another character. Yeah. Let's uh just kind of avoid that. This dot uh, computed. So we're going to be just uh, basically like you know, we're using math.min this dot computed characters dot length to make sure we don't loop past that. Very nice. But yeah, realistically, in actual cases, it would stop at 12 anyway. But yeah, very cool. At the length of the list. Alright, this is great. Um, there are two places we could go right now. Oh, and if we were to get rid of the line break here. Then you, yeah, it's one line. Very nice. Um... We could, uh, work, uh, there are, like, the question now is what do we work on? And there are two things we could work on. We could work on figuring out the weird-ass format and, uh, writing the code around that, which is an option, um, but, in my opinion, no. Um, let's, uh, instead work on the, uh, animation code. The, I want to work on the animation code because it's, uh, more directly related to all this, uh, display stuff. Like, this is stuff we have to figure out. Uh, and animation is stuff we have to figure out too, but we can, we don't have to write any new structures or anything for it. It's just a matter of, like, figuring out timing shit. Um, yeah. Timing shit. So, we're gonna write a function here on the dialog box element. Um, the, we're gonna write the ABI, which we're gonna use to interact with that dialog box element to uh, control the content. Actually, should the... Maybe the animation should go on the dialog content element itself, since that's in charge of all that. I think that would make sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So this is another thing that we have to uh, think about. When we animate, there are going to be uh, moments when uh, we will regard some text as displaying quickly, and some text is displaying slowly, and we want to be able to change that within the message. Uh, so, like, we would do type speed, and we would uh, set a speed variable here, and this would change. Um, Yeah, meaning computed characters is going to contain information about both the... Yeah, okay. Jeez, this is stuff that I'm going to figure out once I am back, because I got a poof to use the bathroom. Uh, so I'm just going to mute myself here. I don't want to bother with splitting the recording. Yeah, we'll figure out some cool stuff soon.
Okay, back. Right, so, um, 
the question now is going to be, how do we decide, since, since we're focusing on building that animation into it, how do we decide what characters to display on the screen at a given point? Um, and the uh, rule that generally guides how I like to code games and shit, I say as someone who's coded one games or whatever in their entire life, is um, that I like to make it work as well as and similarly as it can, consistently as it can, regardless of how slow <laughs> the device it's running on is. Um, basically, if our program is not updating once every millisecond, then how can we make it so that the code still, that the text boxes still display and complete at the same speed? Um, or in general, how can we make sure that things happen within the same amount of time in the real world? Um, and the way that that works is by, um, you know, doing the thing where the thing happens, you know? You know, makes sense, right? <laughs> oh god. What we do is, uh, essentially schedule when things are going to happen, or compute when things are going to happen. Um, so what I'm working on here, what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna have... For every character, instead of like storing type speed, speed 100 or whatever on this, um, we're going to give every single character a display after a value, which is going to be a number. Um, of milliseconds. And every single character is going to get it. So, for characters displaying um, one character every hundred milliseconds or whatever, one character every tenth of a second or ten characters a second, we would do something like this. Let's try putting a bit of an extra space here. Um, hello, space world. Um, just to demonstrate. I know there are quicker ways to write this, but whatever. <laughs> So we get our characters, you know, 0 through 1500. It's going to take 1.5 seconds to display everything. Um, display after is going to be the number of milliseconds after which the number should be displayed. Uh, after which the character should be displayed. Display characters itself is no longer going to be a thing. Instead, we're going to have a variable for time passed, um, which will be a number of milliseconds. Um, and time passed, I believe, um, makes sense to define externally. Um, so I would be like, get time passed. This dot get time passed. Um, realistically what we would have is something like a game function, a game instance, which would have access to stuff like a timer, um, a timer utility, 
which we could use. But instead, we're gonna be not bothering with that and go for something way simpler and just have a get time pass function <laughs> that we pass in to dialogue contents. Um. Get time pass. What am I doing? Um, something cool. We're trying to figure out where to find get time passed. Um, obviously we need to pass it into here. Pretty sure I'm just gonna define uh, get time passed. Let's uh just define this completely externally for now. to a function. Um, this dot get time passed dot bind this. Um, actually, now nah, we can just define this as a separate thing here. Uh, let's just do uh, const start date is this minus start date. Bam! Easy. Alright, so we got our get time pass function now. This would normally be a much cleaner code, but uh, right now we're just uh, externalizing it over to here, and you know, whatever. We didn't have to worry about good code for that, because the timer itself is not what we care about, because we're focusing on the rendering code right now. So, display character is what we need to compute next. Um, in this case, uh, we're not actually going to be caring about, um, a display characters variable anymore. We're going to be looping through all the computed characters dot length, but we need to build a bigger condition here, okay? So it's going to be, and this dot computed characters i dot um, display after is less than or equal to the current time. Const time equals this dot get time passed. Bam. Perfect. This would be, this is working. The only problem is MTUI, or rather not MTUI, but TUILIB, runs on a render it doesn't run on a render loop it doesn't have a render interval um instead it reacts to things changing in the user interface but for a game that's not really relevant like theoretically if we wanted to implement that it would be Things would change after this much time passes, and we would have a set timeout for every character. But that's not code that I really want to deal with. So instead, we're going to render every uh, 60th of a second, or whatever. Um, I haven't thought about like how the code structure as a whole would work. Like. Realistically, if I wanted to do this more optimal, I would be only re-rendering a certain element, and so on, and that's the type of shit that I do not have figured out. And it's not stuff that I really care about, because I am, uh... It's part of a separate thing than, um... Like, the question is, like, if I... Why don't I care about that kind of optimization when I do care about this? And the answer is, that stuff is complicated and a very general question. Whereas this is to do specifically with the way that dialogue content works. So it's fine to focus on right now, preemptively, proactively. Um, for such a time as when the bigger deal problems, like issues with the user interface itself, are fixed. Um, as such, anyway, we need to get the, uh, render interval working. Um, so we're just gonna do 
something really simple. Um, I don't actually remember how to, uh, render things. Render count? Holy shit. This thing is render now to writable. Um, and yeah, we need render now. So we're gonna just set an interval. Root dot render now every 60th of a second. Or 30th of a second or whatever. Hey, look at that. It works. <laughs> Check it out. That's all we were looking for. It works. Um, very cool. Alright. Um, cool. We should probably figure out that get time pass code. Um, hmm. Let's see. We need a timer to determine time passing based on a global clock. But it's important to note that this global note, this global clock, should be pausable. Um, like, for example, if you're in a video game and you have it paused, or you're in a cutscene and you have the uh, game paused. Um, so, we need a timer, which can be paused. We need a timer. Really what we need, yeah. Um, what, we, what we need is a timer whose creation is based on a global game object. As such, I'm gonna make a game. Um, a game class. Um, it's not an element or anything because it's not, it's just game state, and utilities around that. Um, so yeah, let's uh, write some code for that. We need to have a code for a new timer, um, or a new clock. Um, it's going to have a start date, and it's going to return a function, which will uh, tell us date now minus start date. And um, realistically, it's not actually going to be like that. We're going to do get time passed so that we can expose more utility functions on this later if we need to, like pause or whatever. And in reality, this wouldn't strictly be returned like this. It would also be like stored in a array of things to pause um, and so on. But that's not shit that we have to worry about right now. We just want to build the API for it. Um, the interface. So we're going to have a game. Constructor. Game. And, um, yeah. Um, constructor game. Um, uh, content element is going to be a new dialog component based on the game. Beautiful. Um, and the, uh, we need to. Constructor the game. Um, actually, I'm going to store the game, uh, separately from the app element to emphasize its separateness. Game. Um, cost game equals new game. Okay. This is all just fine. Um, we've got the new clock code implemented. Um, gotta store this here. Um, 
when we compute input, um, let's do start clock. Start clock. This dot clock equals this dot game dot new clock. Awesome. Um, all right, and all this rendering shit is gonna do nothing. Time is gonna be this dot clock dot get time passed. If not this dot clock, then return because time is gonna be zero. Um, actually, let's uh, define time. If not this dot clock, time equals zero. So I like to do fun to do things like this. If this dot clock. Let time is zero if this dot clock, then time is this dot clock dot get time passed. Awesome. Run, and that's looking very hilarious. It's <laughs> Okay. I guess technically that works, because this is display after zero, right? And we didn't run start clock, which makes sense. Um, the dialog box. Um, yeah, let's, uh, do... Have a show function for some weird-ass format. And it would be a bit weird-ass. This dot uh, content element dot compute input some weird ass format this dot content element dot start clock and we need to show it here this dot dialog box dot show I don't know some weird ass format. We haven't coded yet. Hey, look, it works. Awesome. Yay. Cool. Animation code is good to go. Alright. It displays. It's based on a clock with an API which we can fuck around with. But it's based on this code. Hi, I am doing a recording, but you are welcome to commune. Hello. Hello. It's great. I'm probably keeping this for myself. The Hi, the mom. That's very cool. I would like Subway. Your <laughs> Peter Pit is bad. Peter Pit is great. I am not getting Peter Pit. Shush! I'm not broke. I have fifty dollars in my bank account, <laughs> which is a text file. Um, I'm happy with anything is the problem. I don't have a preference is what I'm saying. I like food. I would like something relatively hearty meat and meaning not cold cut. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, lots of vegetables. Yeah, chicken or steak, anything like that. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Five, what's the other, is it? It was E1F9, and now I have a 5D. Is it just 5D? No, it's just 5D. Whirlpool 5D. Yeah. SD. If excess suds appears in display, you have excessive suds. Okay, don't worry about it. It's not an issue. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Meanwhile, shenanigans. I think about to eat. Oh, a disaster. Oh, joy. Cool! It's working! I think it's fair to say that the only thing left is to figure out the uh, weird ass format. Um. Hi. I, yeah, I looked it up. It just means there's excessive suds 
and it's running a stud reduction routine, don't worry about it. Excessive suds. Well, there was no suds in my water this time. Too bad. The dog is in here. She's confused because she wandered in. Go right away. Thanks. Okay. Holy carp. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, weird ass format time, bitches. <sighs> um I want this to be writable for um the designers of the format. So it should be really easy to um code. So I think that a weird ass format would be like show. Let's uh, put this in a line break. Cool. Um. Hello. Um. Reset. <laughs> World. So the question is, what do we want the? Why do we want it to look? Right. Um. To which I answer, I don't know. Um. Format. Bold. F. There. All right. F bold. It's pretty easy to read. F bold means what comes next should be bold. F means what comes next should be nothing. So I think this should be fine. And uh, we need something here. Weight 500. And we also need a speed. be fine. So let's uh, do some computations now. Whoops. Wow, I have not been using double quotes. You cannot shake my terrible habits. Alright, some weird ass format. This is no longer going to be some weird-ass format. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's going to be, uh... Input string. Whee! How? Alright. So, our, compu our computing here is going to have two jobs. Actually, it's going to have one job in general, which is to generate the computed characters for use by other parts of the dialogue content element. Um, but mainly, what, what that actually is going to be broken up is um, working out time, i.e. display after, and uh, extra shit, like formatting and line breaks. Line breaks are not something I'm going to deal with right now. Um, yeah. We're gonna use a for loop, because for loops are fucking awesome. And... Just loop over this. Um... Uh, if input string i is the open brace, then the command is gonna be everything inside the open brace, um, up to, but not including, the, uh, closing brace. Um, for, no, let, let end i <laughs> equals i. For, and i, 
um, length, and end eye. God, I don't know. This is so silly, because it would be like, the actual loop is gonna be like this, okay? Input string i is not that. Alright. Oops. And i. Plus plus. And then there's a semicolon. And I think that works. Um, for let e x equal zero, x is less than five x plus plus semicolon. Yeah, that's fine. All right, it's a for loop which doesn't have anything in it. This is a rare case where a var would be useful, but <laughs> because then we don't have to define it here. I'm gonna go like this. There, that'll be a bit cleaner. All right, very cool. This is very silly code. Alright, point is, the uh, string should be... Um, const um, command equals input string dot slice i plus one through to end i. Um, because, like, abc dot slice zero comma three is going to slice up to uh, index 3, which is D, but not including index uh, 3. And um, so in this case, we would have like this. Um, it would be like this, right? So we're going to be slicing from the uh, first position of the uh, curly brace, which is four plus one, um, up to the position of the end brace, which is uh, like fucking fourteen, <laughs> is the kind of slice that we're going to be doing, and we'll get a string that looks like that. Um, const. Uh, const code equal const parts equals command dot split by space and in this case we don't actually want it like that we're gonna have code comma args okay and uh, um, the uh, code is going to be the command code so it's like fucking speed or f Wait. Um, and then args is gonna be everything else. Switch code case um, speed break case f break and you know this would be like case format as well. Case wait break. Um, very cool, very cool, very cool. Whee! Um, yeah. I think this is good. Oh, yeah. And we also want to do, like, you know, um... If if end i is input string dot length, then we fucked up, and this command doesn't have a closing brace. Um. No closing brace, and at end of string break. Um. Just stop displaying computing here. Yeah. Um. 
Um, now we can work on the actual commands. Um, let's, uh, get the computed. Um, this dot computed characters is gonna be an array. We're going to, um, yeah. Alright. Cool. Const car. No, wait. Right, 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 right. Okay, so if it's a command... So, commands are things that are going to get associated with the next character, okay? Right? Because speed 100, f bold, etc. So, like, um... Yeah. Which I think is kind of hilarious. We're working on a next character when we set commands. We're not going to be working on, like, uh, this character or whatever. We're working on the next character. So, let next character is going to be just an empty string. An empty object for now. So, while we get commands, if we get things like format, we're going to be, excuse me, uh, modifying the next character. Next character dot extra. Um... dot push. Uh, actually, if not next character dot extra, next character dot extra is gonna be an empty array, next character dot extra dot push, um, type formats. And then we're just gonna have the properties here. Um, which will be like bold. Um, Formatting. Const formatting equals empty array if args.includes bold formatting dot push bold. Uh, sorry, formatting dot bold equals true. Cool. And this should be fine. Um, we don't need to set it to be false because our formatting is already designed to be. Uh, based on the attributes here. Which arguably means that there should be an array instead of that, but, like, whatever. Actually, is, like, whatever fair? Formatting is going to be an array now, because I decided so. And it's not going to be like this anymore. Formatting.push, bold. And formatting is no longer going to be that, it's just going to be args. No more need for the brace, because we're not defining any variables. Cool. Let's go back to... Uh, the draw to code and deal with formatting attributes if entry const formatting e formatting equals entry if formatting dot includes bold push one that's pretty cool that's looking broken because I tried to run code that's not remotely done yet <laughs> Um, excuse me, what's going on here? Oh, why are we computing input here? That's not what we should be doing. Cool. Um, what? Um, Oh yeah, because this is not something we should be doing right now. Very cool. So none of that should display anything anymore. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Anyway, awesome. So we've got our next character shit going. Um, very good, very good, very good. 
Now, once this is done, once we're done processing the command, we gotta continue. And if we get to this point, it is not part of a command, or rather we aren't gonna have to move past the command or whatever. Um, Alright, let's keep an eye on this. Yeah, we gotta move I to and I, and then continue. And in this case, we're just gonna instead do uh, const... Actually, no, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. I was gonna say, do we want to start change start I or whatever, but no, this is fine. Alright, we're continuing after that, which means the next character is going to be past the brace. Um, and we're gonna... Um, it'll be a character. So, next character dot character equals input string i. Um, we're going to push the character. And we're going to define a new next character to work on. Let's try that. Awesome, that's looking not broken at all. Um, part of it is probably the fact that our characters don't even have a display after time. So let's try uh, setting that to just be zero for now. Whoops. Yeah, there we are. Awesome. Check it out. Displayed. Beautiful. All at once, obviously, since display after is zero. Cool beans. Getting somewhere. Alright. All that's left is to get display after code working. And word wrap, I guess. <laughs> um, display after is going to be based on the speed. So let speed equals zero. For now, we're going to have a reasonable default of 50. Um, whatever. So next character to display after is going to be that. Um, we're also going to have a let time equals zero. Um, next character dot display after equals time. Time plus equals speed. Um, the speed command is going to set speed to parse int um, or rather number. Or whatever. I don't know. Parsons. Um, arg zero. Um, the wait command is going to increase time by parse int arg zero. And that should be fine. Hello world. Bam. Cool. We got time working. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, here's something I wanted to do from the start, after getting the animation working for the first time. Bam. And we could say speed zero here. Bam. Great. Very cool. Um, let's try break plus, um, wait, 500 break. This is a pretty neat test. Um, and let's try coding break. Case break. Um, as usual, I'm gonna do this. Next character dot extra dot push type um I drink. Wow, look at my fucking great Holy shit, I'm just gonna use single quotes, oh my god. Cool. Very nice. That's some good word rap. <laughs> uh, 
don't you think? So we gotta figure out word wrap. Um. That's a thing, alright. Word wrap. How do we do word wrap? Um, I've written word wrap code before, so it's not like this is fucking something I haven't done. Um. Essentially, the idea is we treat uh, words as each word as a chunk that gets pushed. All right, um, but because we're not dealing with a lines-based approach, right? The output isn't going to be a bunch of rows. It's going to be a series of rows where the first character of a word is gonna be, uh, hmm. yeah, okay. Point is, the output format is one where we put a line break onto um, the character which starts the word, and we're also going to splice off the extra space, the white space at the end of the previous line. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, basically, we need to keep track of uh, the starting character for each word. Um, we're gonna say, we're gonna have a character here. Let's break character is gonna be a it's gonna be some character object hold on my headphones are fucked up wires tangled damn it what the hell is going on Break character. Break character is going to be the first character of a word. Um, however, if the break character. The break character is not going to be the first character on a line because it would not make sense to add. A, it wouldn't make sense to break a word by breaking the first uh, if that word begins at the start of the line. Instead, we would uh, break it by putting the door. This is a very nice song, and I think that you should go and download Meow Meow and buy it, if you can. Is my opinion. You should do that. In the meanwhile, let's code. <laughs> Holy shit. This is a pretty neat test, don't you think? Breaking at test, um, because... Line break characters, break character. Break character is gonna be the first character of the, after a space if the previous character um, is a space. Let previous character um, online. Um, previous character online equals 
uh, the next character. Okay. If previous character online... is a space. Um, then break character equals next character. You know, the character that's coming up. Actually, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that, because we don't want to be looking backwards. We're always looking forwards. Um, if we're looking backwards, this is just going to make this more confusing. So if input string i is a space, then break character is going to be next character. That's better. I want to be the moon. <laughs> this is a good song. Okay, Info String is, uh, yeah. If we're dealing with a space, then the bright guy is going to be the next game. Very cool. Now we need to do the actual wrapping code since we got the break character set. Um, if. When do we do wrapping? Alright, so let's check out test. We know we're gonna wrap once we get to. I'd say the letter T, because T is the last character on the line. So we're going to have a uh, let column equal zero. Um, we also want a const width equals this dot content width, which is really just going to be the width of the element, but whatever. Actually, it's better to use content width <laughs> in general. <sighs> okay. If um, column is equal to content width, column is going to be zero content. If the column were the content width, then we'd be at the comma, I think. Minus one. Then we know that we're doing a break. Um, so, if break character dot extra, break character dot extra is that, break character dot extra dot, <laughs> and shift, type, line break. Very cool. But break character, thusly, uh, we need to reset the column to zero. Um, column plus plus. Uh, column is going to be zero. However, if break character is nothing because we never got a break character, if not break character, because i.e. it was a word that expand that spans the full length of the thing, then break character equals next character. I.e. the character we're currently uh, fucking with. Um, yeah. 
let's also, uh, let's, uh, say const this character equals next character, because at this point, we're not, uh, we're not going to be, uh, working on the next character anymore, we're working on this character that we're about to append, no matter what. This character, this character, this. Okay. Next character is an empty object. Very cool. And um, looks good. Um, alias, since we're not working, since we're working on the character we're about to push. Oh, hey, uh, Mom's home and supper is ready. That means I gotta pause this. Why is content width not defined? Oh, yeah. That would do it. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Hey, it broke. <laughs> it didn't break. Alright, supper is ready, so I'm gonna poof. I'll be back, though, to finish this up.
So bear with me. Not a jetted out for the sake of sanity. I try to keep my mouth shut. Not a jetted out, but not everybody needs to know what's going on. Cause I have far too many pleasant thoughts to say that are not meant to fall. Okay, back. Air supply. Alright, uh, had a spare boy. Very tasty. Um, this is a pretty neat test, don't you think? Except it's not working. <laughs> um, content width, or width minus one is not happening. Column is zero, so it should be increasing. Con width is presumably <laughs> appropriately set. So it looks like our breaking is not working. Even though break character should exist, and extra should be working. So what's going on? We got our line break. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Dear goodness. Also, we have to uh, unset break character here. But that shouldn't do anything. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, something's not working. This is what I do. I mean, is it detecting this case? Process.exit. <laughs> oh, you know, it's probably not helping. Okay, so first off, it's not getting there. Second off, when we do a line break, um. This is a line break. Which means- oh, shit, I forgot to put a break there. Anyway, um, column should be zero. Um, and break character should be null. Because we're going to the next line. Yeah? Very cool, but also what the hell. Um, column plus plus. Hmm. 
Well, it's not reaching that, so what's with? Console.log <laughs> with. Negative two. Oh, we're computing and oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right. This dot input string equals input string. Fix layout means we need to uh, recompute based on that. Cool, but also not cool because it's not working. Let's get rid of this code. Um, it's still negative two. <laughs> um, Well, it is running that. Oh. What? Um. Oh. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah, okay, I know why it's doing this. Because, of course, the first time it computes, it's gonna be fucked up. But once it fixed layouts, right? Process.exit? Yeah. Uh, content width. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's only running the one time, which is concerning. Oh, uh. Fix layout. Maybe I forgot to do that. Would that fix it? Hey, that, uh, is crashing, so that's a good sign. Yeah. There we are. That looks like something good. Let's try it out. Hey! Look at that! It works! Alright. Nice. Alright. Let's try this. Ow. Speed, uh, 20. Beautiful. Hey. Cool. Uh, except the column, uh, turns out it, uh, does not need to break there, but the next character, I guess, which is fair beans. I guess it's because the content width is like that. This is a very pretty song. Hmm. Cool. Yay! <laughs> it works! We got it working! What do you know? Now, mind, if there were, uh... If we instead had this as the situation... Then it's suddenly fucking. Uh, hmm, that's concerning. Oh, is it? No. What? Um, why is it breaking? Um, shouldn't it be breaking at the letter A where it intersects the edge of the box? Oh, wait. Oh, um, oh, yeah, no, that's true, that is demonstrating what's wrong. Okay, well, this is fine. Uh, let's, uh, let's comment this one out for now. The trouble is that we're resetting the, uh, column to zero once we get to the F that's two spaces away from A, which is what would normally intersect that box. Um, or more specifically S, I guess. Um, 
yeah, when we get to F. Yeah, so, uh, the trouble is, we need to be including all the characters from the break character up to the current character. Um, so, um, in our new column count. So, let break column equals zero. Um, when we set break character equals, uh, column, I think this should work. Oops. Um, column equals, uh, column minus, e minus equals break column. Actually, no, that's not how that works. So if the break column, actually, is that right? That is right, isn't it? Yeah. Because it'll be like that. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, that looks like something good. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's see if normal word wrap works. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right, so this would have originally been a problem with like words that break across multiple lines. So like, Lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum. I don't actually know how it goes at all. I mean, I, why would I know how it goes? But it feels like something I would have memorized that I don't. Lorem ipsum. Um, can I just like, copy this? Oh, yeah. This is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Very much word wrapped. Um, let's, let's print this much quicker. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. It went out of bounds. Speed one. Yeah. Um, let's uh, cut this. Speed two. Very nice. Uh, let's demonstrate how this frame rate thing works, though, just to show it off. So let's say that we update every thirtieth of a second. Yeah, it should take the same amount of time to render. See? Here we're rendering just ten times a second, and it's still displaying everything. Our normal frame rate is sixty. And theoretically, something higher shouldn't do anything different for the display, because, at least on my screen, and in the recording, it's a 60 frame rate. Uh, it's a 60 frame per second screen. Speed one. Speed 60. Wah! Awesome. Uh, 20 frames per second. Yeah. Very cool, right? 5 frames per second, you know? It displays in just a couple frames, but it's still the same amount of time. I mean, obviously it's like slightly offset as far as our eyes are concerned, um, because it's a... Uh, because it uh, doesn't update at exact intervals or whatever, but yeah. Um, but it's like logically done within the same amount of time. Um, and that's also displayed as the same amount of time to the user. That's pretty cool. Okay, 
let's uh, comment this out and get these two examples back together. Ow. Uh, let's try changing the speed to here. Speed 10 appears to display virtually instantaneously. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's try putting a name into here. Um, pow. Wow. Pretty neat. There we go. It works! <laughs> I'm gonna call this here, since, uh... That's pretty good progress. It works. It's, uh, it's a dialogue box. It doesn't deal with extending past, uh, three lines, or whatever, but I think that's fine. That would be, like, complicated anyway for, for animations and stuff that I don't really have figured out right now, or care too much about at the moment. But yeah, this works. Neat. Well, I mean... Thanks for watching. <laughs>